good people of a great nation is a pleasure to welcome you to the second edition of development focus with gd ojo and for this session i'm going to be having an interactive with a legal luminary of no mean feet uh, i've known him for ages uh he's an abuja based legal practitioner uh sunday godwin Oboji. you are welcome to the show thank you so much it's a privilege been on air with you on your program, and I wish you well on this program. And please don't flatter me too much. Legal luminary, that was a big one. Well, I, I, I mean, you, you are a legal practitioner, yeah, and yeah, I know yeah. you are also a constitutional lawyer. Mm. Now, um, we, the, on this session, we will be looking at uh, law and development, mm. basically. Um, quite a number of people will say, we don't have enough laws to take care of all our challenges. Some people will say, our greatest problem in Nigeria is constitution. What's your opinion about that? Yeah, we I like the way you started with in no part of the world or no place can you have development without law. Mm. The law gives a room for certainty. Law gives uh, a direction of where you are going to and law tells you what to do and what not to do and prescribe penalties and consequences for what you do that is wrong. Mm. So you for you to grow, you must have laws. Sure. And laws must be in place. But the most important thing is, are the laws respectable? Let me go back to your question. You have more than enough laws, GD. Mm. You have more than enough laws that if we follow them through, we don't have any problem. And we called the session and we did, when you invited me for your wonderful program, you also said, is it for lack of implementation? Implementation, that is why people are saying there are no laws. And that is, you just got it very, very correctly. The challenge we have in Nigeria is lack of implementation and this lack of implementation is what is being is, is breeded by impunity mm. when i come to talk about law i weep and as you really pointed out i am a lawyer i see where court orders are not obeyed mm. if court orders are not obeyed naturally you, you see that it will ensure somebody else will have the confidence to breach the law so that is one aspect and then the impunity I'm talking about, because thank God we are discussing this issue, because it is not an issue of lack of laws. Mm. The laws are just more than adequate. Mm. But the point is, what are we doing people that break the laws? What are we doing people that refuse to consciously uphold the laws? What are we doing people that will throw the law overboard and do what they want to do? That's the impunity aspect. That is it. And because no punishment will be that on people that break the law, let's go for to public sector for example, that monies come, you say a to tell you that government money is my money. Mm. You put this in the bank and there's no punishment and there are laws regulating how you should deal with public finances. And we don't have to go into the government because uh, before that is are coming on board. But when you talk about disobedience of court order, now how do you not bring a government officials to book when you know that whatever the pronouncement of the court is it be flaunted and no action can be taken. If that is the order of the day, will you not naturally speak over to the society to me and you where I feel I'm brought up bigger than you, you feel you're bigger than me. So our problem is not lack of flaws, but lack of protection of the law as you earlier put it away. But, but let, let's go back to also part of part B of that question. Mm. Um Professor Shola, Shola de, a member of the Senate. I don't know whether he former, talked, former, uh, 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 this night assembly, mm. but he was there for quite a while, maybe three, four, ten yes. uh, times. He, 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 uh, he, if you should, should see where he held a copy of the Constitution, I said, "This is our problem in Nigeria. This is our problem." And so, do you do you agree with him that uh, the, the Constitution is a big problem for Nigeria? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do know he's into rhetoric and theatrics. For that yes, and my there's no law that is perfect. We we'll have to start from that. The society evolves every day. That's why you have room for amendment. We have room for changes. We have for abrogation of laws. We have room for making of new laws. So when you come and say a document, an entire document is a problem, it's absurd to me. Nothing is. Me, I can sit down today. We have passed through this route. Tomorrow, can block this route and say there is a new route for this place. Is that you say that this place is not in existence? No. But the point is that new rules are there. So that is how law is dynamic. Things 
challenges evolve and at any point in time you have people that will want to constantly bring the law so the law have to evolve to meet the new challenges and dynamics of society yes you have challenges when you look at the 1999 concern particularly when you talk about true federalism mm. because that is where every person is agitating for because that is where you express yourself i express myself if you brought me here now i don't have a script you don't have a script you are telling me to say what is in my mind and that will make me naturally not want to disappoint you to work hard before i come so that whatever you bring on board i'll be able to answer and your program will go international that is the idea but when you now constrain me Oboji, you are coming to my program if i say a say b if i say c say d we have not given any room for, to develop because you have put down everything for me to say. So where will I now bring my potentials? Where will I now even see your pro the presenter as a presenter, not a, not a discussion as you used to be before now? So that is the challenge we have with the constitution. But for you to come and say the whole entire constitution is a problem, I think is absurd. But yes, truth and realism is essential for us to develop because particularly in view of our multicultural and ethnic religious dimension and culture in this country. You cannot restrict me to certain things. That is why the federal principle where almost everything in Nigeria is constituted on the executive list, where even education <laughs> is being controlled by the federal government. Rail, road, all the media that, 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 that brings us that brings it, us it, to it the issue so. of uh, the concurrent legislative list and the um, executive, executive legislative uh, one has about sixty eight items, another has twelve. And people have said we need to rejig, we need to devolve power, we need to restructure. What's your take on that? That, that, that is where I'm going to. That is okay. just the essence of it all. So for a day, they come and tell us the whole constitution is the problem. That is not what the leader should portray. You should tell us how we should go about rejigging, as you rightly put it. That you see the way and manner we are going in this country. There's no way the federal government can carry on the way it is going, and because the federal government have so much put everything on his head and sit down and insist that they should share location states are not working the local government are not working that's why you talk about counties you are watching american development you talk about counties having their affairs states having their affairs and stuff of that nature that is the essence of life you cannot come and have resources in opa and uh, in Benue state and somebody just come from federal government allocation and then there's fighting and 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 anarchy in that area because the person is not carrying the people the locality along let the locals own their resources and i'm excited happen yeah, it's happening that's what everybody's saying before now uh, uh, the let's uh, uh, there is there i watch him on television saying that he whipped we are mana we are wasting the resources that is oil yeah. but the joy he had is that the real resource of nigeria has not been tampered with it so fortunately that before now for whatever it is the federal government or whoever was in charge of the federal government have not deemed it necessary to devolve resources to be for the people and then pay taxes and realities to the government so that you can work with it that one did can i show a lot of persons will remain back in their place because every other part of nigeria have valuable resources now we don't have to wait for their government to give us license individuals local government chairmen will look for investors that will come to the environment and they will discuss terms that will benefit the society and the uh, the investors and at the same rate the brain drain or the rural urban migration we have will be dwindled because at that point in time the infrastructure developed because they are coming to bring higher that even though because of the banditry that the leaders of the of the north west are encouraging the resources they have in their location is enormous to take care of whatever they want to do what do dubai have apart from oil and look at the way they have changed dubai look at kogi state will you be having what you're having now the natural resources in kogi state if it's developed around the environment not state even counties local government you can imagine what a community will do with what they have because if i bring you on board we have terms we have people of understanding they are coming on board hospitals road schools um uh, Business infrastructures you provided for us. Why you get whatever we are getting? In no time today, I can assure uh, the country. Uh, 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 how can we? How can we use law for development? The, what, uh, what, what's the nexus? Uh, law, 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 law. They say law is an ass. Mm -hmm. Law is um, uh, like a description of an elephant by six <laughs> blind people. You hear about you you touch, you touch you touch what, What's your take on this? How can law? be useful national development and that is what we have moved that into from what we are analyzing mm. now we now have a federal a, a, an executive leader have things that are not necessarily in the executive lead mm. if the law is now changed that now gives more power to the concurrent list where issues on the executive list are devolved to the concurrent list where states and not just states local government 
have the ability to manage what they have have the ability to manage their police have the ability to manage their resources have the ability to to extend their curriculum for education then the law now being used to open up space to engage people to a language express themselves the way they want to express themselves at the point in time did they, history was not taught in, this, in schools mm. history was not taught in school so my children your children now not know about Oyo empire Kalibu new empire about the doma kingdom the igala kingdom the thief kingdom what, what, what is that because that is coming from but if by law it is evolved that state can form their curriculum and other stuff you know that naturally that will now become uh, on board states might want to just go completely science and it will benefit them now you have the windmill so much wind and sun in the north why will you not have electricity devolve around that is law so with law where are you now losing things and now put regulations in place for state local government to harness to evolve to develop on their own the law has been used to unbundle infrastructure to unbundle talent to unbundle a lot of the luminal issues that is where the law is because as you say what did i say from the beginning now, law is what makes the society develop because with law you have certainty with law you have assurance that this will go the way they are but now that the law is concentrated in the federal government that the federal government is so busy doing other things that they will not be even ready or have the time to do the nitty gritty that is on ground that is why we have all this massive now let's go where you see development and law coming hand in hand mm. if you have it's a mentality of coercion of states mm. where states have the ability to form their police because police when people talk yes i might have my reservation about governors the way i'm going have them but <laughs> it's a necessary evil that mm. will come to pass after a while it's a phase that will come to pass i was arguing one of my senior colleagues he said if i complain what about the federal government i the police honor them i do not do what they are doing but have we seen the excess abuse yes we have the challenge of state governors maybe abusing the instrumentality of police but this is mandatory if local governments and states have effective arms and ammunition in the hands of their well constituted local authorities police or whatever it is called will you have this type of infantry being exhibited by banditry bandits all over the country where you now have to wait for federal might military uh, soldiers to come from above and if the governor is not in good terms with the president that might not come on, on board immediately so this is where law comes on board that law should be in such a way that can be effectively used by local authorities to formulate issues that will benefit the society because if you have decentralized police where the states have the ability the local government have the ability to constitute themselves or to form police or or protective units issue of banditry will not be as fierce mm. and as it is damaging our economy today now we don't have food there's food challenge there's there, there, you can't move about but if you have laws that are in such a way that local government and states can implement their own security apparatus you can be assured that this will now be, that, 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 that takes me to what role do you see for Nigeria Bar Association? Uh, you are a member of the bar. Mm. Uh, let's talk briefly about uh, the role of the bar and the bench in national development. Because I, I'm, I'm particular about development because that's what this program is all mm. about. It's about development, focus on development. development. We, we, are, we, are, we have talked so much about everything but we have never really developed in the true sense of it. Yeah, I so I, I want to introspect and reflect and bring solutions mm. on how we can overcome our developmental challenges. Mm. That's what this program is all yeah. about. So what role do you see for the bench and the bar in uh, uh, overcoming Nigeria's developmental Yeah, the, uh, the, the bar should be more challenge. forceful in their demands and insist on the rule of law being played out and that is by calling out people that have heard insisting on on obey, 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 um, obedience, obedience to, to rule of, of court orders court and orders, other yeah. stuff and where they done they can down to look at yes it was peculiar it was stressful for nine months as we were as we on strike and they succeeded in getting the bulk of what they wanted no government can operate outside the society Mm. and MBA is part and parcel of the society mm. where a lot of people look up to. If the government fails to do certain things, the MBA, look at Aka Bashon during the military regime, insisted and let's strike and let's cut boycott. Boy, boy, boy boy and 
if they are successful to at the point hold the military to redirect them to do the right footing so that's where the NBA comes on board mm. that it is not about just rosy 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 having brief touching the best of the society it's about we call ourselves Leonard the society look up to you wherever it is you meet a lawyer even if it's one year old you listen to him because you believe he has mm. a problem and now as you really pointed out the, everybody is looking up to you because as you, whether I like it or not the ancestors brought out a very fundamental thing people are attacking the courts people are attacking the judicial institution that tells you people are losing faith and might not be comfortable with what is happening so now the MP have to rise to the occasion mm. that judgment of courts must be obeyed no matter who else it got if that is implemented, if that is enforced, if that is achieved and followed through, I can assure you that people will start having confidence in the judiciary. And then when you come to the judiciary, the bench, sincerely speaking, I sympathize with the bench. Mm. People don't understand what they go through. But I am a lawyer. It is not because I'm a lawyer that I'm saying so. But GD, you come to court from time to time. At this age and time, GD, judges are writing with long hand. Mm. Now, what me and you are saying now, assuming you are taking record, that can I, could you have come to this page? Could you have asked me the number of questions I've asked, asked me, or could you have answered the number of questions you asked but me? But I learned at some point that, the, the, at least for FCT, they, they are trying to automate... Uh, the funds were not there because the politicians, the executives, or whatever it is, are not just interested in it. Because nothing on earth is rocket science. There's nothing we want now that cannot be done. There's nothing on it. This is not we are going to invent uh, teleprompters or we are going to invent electronic typewriters or we are invent recorders. No, these are already in existence. It's just to put them in. To we are talking about this, uh, and, the, deploy and, and, and deploy it as simple as that. This simple thing. So, so why, why have we not seen that happen? Because the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, do you think we don't they, have to they, go for a judiciary independent financially? The financial attorney we are talking about. You are going far. Look at judges, magistrates in cross river states are collapsing. Yeah, I, 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 I want that. And, and they are collapsing and, 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 and the governor still have the effort to tell the whole world that he did not appoint them. But are they delivering? Are they working? So when you come to the bench, the bench is all of us that will fight for them because as it, I can talk as a lawyer. But the judges cannot talk. Mm. They cannot express themselves. They cannot tell their reservation. Do you know how many judges are dying because of sheer hard work? You go to a costless Lagos, you have four attack cases, you, you, the judge can never give you his best. He comes to Abuja, 20 to 25 cases in the costly, the judge can never give you their best. How many resources do they have to even employ staffs? You have you give a judge that have more than 300 cases in his docket, one legal assistant. How can he survive that? And every day I want my case head, you want your case head, how do you move on? So we have to evolve. But we want to see institutions that we saw the craziness in American democracy recently. We also saw the resilience of the institution. Mm. We also saw how people went on board and not care who is there. And then coming back to the bench again, we should not push the bench to people that are just looking for where to rest. Mm. Now it has come to the fore that most people appointed as judges or magistrates are persons that must know one or two persons. That should not be the issue. Because at the end of the day, it will call down and boil down to affect society. Mm -hmm. So we should give the best of the best this opportunity to sit on the bench. And as we give this opportunity, the state, the executive, and the society should move that the requisite enabling infrastructures and environment should be provided so that at the end of the day, when I have this put with you, you rest assured that it will be adjudicated judiciously and with, in, in, in fairness and in equity without you, you, caring who you, is you, bigger. You brought out a salient point. Uh, at some point, we have, out of the full complement of Supreme Court, uh, that should be 21, we had about 12. 12. Uh, and, 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 and the, I, I, people were shouting, calling on the president to have point, because every case, most civil and you know, criminal case gets uh, as high as the Supreme, uh, Court. Supreme Court. Even election matters yeah. uh, for governorship, presidential. Mm -hmm goes to Supreme Court. So what what is the hindrance? Why? I, I don't know for a court of appeal, but I'm familiar with that of Supreme Court. And I learned several other federal state high courts are under under um, under resourced in terms of manpower, in terms of funding. So how do we overcome this challenge? The funds are for me are there. Even the small funding released to the judiciary shock you that not all is released. Mm. And if you heard at the point 
Though for the issue of the Supreme Court, there are a lot of policies involved. I don't want to go into that. You gave me warning before now, so let me stick to that. If you remember before now, before the swearing of the eighth justice of the Supreme Court simultaneously, four were already appointed over 11, 12 months before the other four were appointed. Why were they not sworn in? But let's leave that at that. But if you want to evolve and ensure that judiciary plays the fundamental role in evolving development, mm. we should exclude sentiment and ensure that the writing is done. And what is the writing now? Like the likes of Ayade in Crossover State now, holding funds. Now the National Judicial Council have said big names of persons and Ayade have consistently refused to send the person's name because it's not from the state in quote. In Gombe State, for, for over how many period of year, months now, the governor, because the, 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 the number one person that is supposed to be nominated as a is a Christian, the governor constantly didn't want to send the name here till tomorrow the NJC say, no, you must include her name. For this. So, if we want society to evolve and want the law to help and assist society, we must do things dispassionately, mm. devoid of interest of politics, religion, or culture. If we do that, at the end of the day, we saw how America stood by an apparent attempt, desperate attempt to, to ruin institution of America by Trump. But the institutions took by even his vice president looking by to and say, I will preserve the constitution. I will go by the constitution. You saw the last of uh, the majority leader uh, Stand me, McCall, thank you. Standing for the constitution, even though this party has the right to benefit. When will we go to this type of level where I don't care that Judas is my friend and brother? If you are wrong, I tell you the truth. At the end of the day, it will benefit all of us. Okay, that, that, that's, that, let, let, let's come to the issue of anti corruption war. Uh, the president, in his uh, New Year uh, broadcast, uh, was asking the judiciary to fast track the prosecution of um, corruption cases. Uh, and uh, uh, Before we come to that, let, let me pick your uh, thought on Administrator, uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. And this, this w is supposed to have, uh, fast track uh, the delivery on criminal uh, justice or criminal cases mm -hmm. as it were. Uh, land by you know everything being done within six months mm -hmm. or thereabout. What is the militating factor? There's no militating factor on Agja. It is doing excellently well, GD. Mm -hmm. If you are in court and you are practicing, you know that. But for Agja, the speed we have had that will not be there at all. Mm -hmm. Now, interlocutor applications need not be determined immediately. Before now, I file any frivolous application, no matter how frivolous it is, and the court is bound to determine it and I'll use that and go on appeal. If you remember that is why all these Carlos case because the all these Carlos case and most of the governor cases was before the advent of Aja. That's why all interlocutor appeal was in the Supreme Court before they came back. But Aja have dispensed with that, bring all the application, the judge will take them in but deliver ruling and judgment at the same time simultaneously. Mm. Now there's no room again we can severe trials. If you are if, if I'm I charge with you and I run away I can can go on. You saw even in the advent of Minami 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 fled no, man, the country Trial was still going on. Mm. There are a lot of things. Trial cannot be day to day. No, jo no lawyer will come and no stand in court. And no, no, if a judge is able and willing to go ahead, no lawyer can tell the judge that I can't come tomorrow. That I'm thinking of. So, Abja is doing a lot still. So, so, so you go beyond that. Mm. Now, what about the infrastructures? Mm. They got the, 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 why this six month thing you're talking about cannot work. The man still have the judge still have to write long hand. Mm. We just still have to take uh, evidence long hand. Mm. A lot of procedures have to be done manually. manually. So how, no matter how expeditious this court is, this judge is, how can he do? Somebody say I have twenty-five witnesses. If it is not manual as it's recorded, he can take the twenty-five in a day. But now, by how can he, he have feasible is this? No matter how working, because whether you like it or not, this will tell on you. You take this twenty-five in a day, you will collapse. There's no doubt about so, that. So, so let, let's come to the issue of anti-corruption. What's your take? On the issue of plea bargaining, plea bargaining is everywhere in the world is effective and necessary mm -hmm. because there are certain offenses that you don't waste the time of the court. And plea bargaining does not mean the person is not punished. Plea bargain, let's get it very, very, very clear. Plea bargaining does not escapate the offender. No, it only mitigates one, you don't waste this type of thing you're talking about in court anymore, and two, the sentence you are going to, you might necessarily have, you know, have. We saw it with Ibori. When the states in Britain brought up all the facts against, he ran and took plea bargain. Mm -hmm. Instead of about something years in prison, they gave him 
about 10 or about. So this is play by game in operation. So play by game is good because at the end of the day, punishment is to serve as deterrent and punishment is to reform. So now, if somebody is supposed to go for 50 years imprisonment, cumulatively from all this, and I said, I don't want to win the time of court because as you are pointing out now, if we go for trial, instead of the court having enough time to deal with one issue, they can have this man on trial for the next five, six years, wasting the precious time of the court. At the end of the day, the man still have right of alocuto, and the court can see uh, 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 reduce the sentence. So why wouldn't I say, I accept my responsibilities, I accept my guilt, and deal with it. So play by game is important and imperative. Once it's not abuse. So, uh, 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 sorry, sorry to cut yeah. you short. Now, let, let's deal with the issue of whistleblower. Uh, some have said, oh, uh, the, uh, this administration has claimed that with the whistleblower policy, mm -hmm. they've been able to recover huge sums of money. But it was very rampant. It was being reported um, at some point when the, this was initially introduced, I think about 2017 or 2018. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, for almost two years now, we are not hearing of anybody <laughs> helping with whistleblowing uh -huh. again. What is the problem with the whistleblowing? No, there's no problem. It's a, it's a good policy, but whistleblowing is not supposed to be what you even rant about. Mm. Because you're supposed to keep everything in secret about the identity of the person and not to discourage people from coming out and not to also alert people that are doing wrong to mm. to Don't run away to do, move. I move. So it's not something that should be in the media. But we have agricultural agencies that are just excited. Instead of going to the nitty gritty of issues, we just want the gleam light of the moment. Mm. That is not supposed to be so. Even though whistleblowing is supposed to be something that is an ongoing procedure that is not supposed to be known. Mm. At the end of the day, it is when we talk about recoveries that they should be bringing it up in their annual audit reports of what and what they are doing. But I can assure you, and I want to believe whistleblowing is still ongoing. And it's a very good policy that we aid us. Because there's nothing that will happen here that somebody will not know of. So if the enabling environment and the reward system is there, I don't have to expose myself and I'm rewarded. It will go on well. But now we heard about people complaining about being sure change. And mm. that they blew whistle, they did not say anything after they thing again, mm. and based on their own evidence, it is what they took. We have heard people that well, they are supposed to call if it's ten percent, they give them one percent and say, What have you done? So these are discouraging factors. So that is where the government should also follow up and ensure that their policies are not hijacked or rubbish by people that are supposed to implement. Because if the reward system in which blow, which is very fundamental, is implemented, I can assure we have more of this result. What we shouldn't have is not something I will make this about, it's so something we should come and see annually or quarterly during our report of investigation so, activities. So, um, there are also school of thought, uh, there is a school of thought that says uh, whistleblowing policy is not far reaching enough in the fight against corruption. We actually need whistleblower protection law. What's your take on that? Well, of course, uh, if I'm not protected, <laughs> you are blowing whistle against the PAMSEC, a minister, you are because people that know all those things are the junior officer level one and level two, level three. If you are not being protected, you want the person to ruin his entire family and life. So the push protection law is inevitable. It's something that must come on board to embolden and encourage people to do the needful. Because if this whistleblowing act becomes a practice and culture in Nigeria, GD, I can assure you that corruption will be nipped in the bud. Because you know that you'll be exposed, you know that you'll be apprehended, you know that you'll be arranged, you know that you'll be disgraced and punished. So it is something that must come on board. And in, in view of that, the, any law that is to be brought to protect and ensure that the person that gives information that leads to fundamental discovery should be well rewarded and protected. So that law is inevitable and something that should come on board that will assist us. Now, um, people are also talking about the fight against corruption. Um, why we are, what has slowed it down? Uh, they said um, judiciary, uh, maybe we need to have a special court for handling of corruption cases. It is impunity. It mm. is not anything about judiciary or special court. Leave all these things they, they talk about they want to make. No How many people have we have seen in glaring open light accused and verifiable evidence even though no concrete in the public can be brought and we have not seen? You say I should not mention that I don't just mention them saying that. That we are seen within government. People are there protecting themselves. People are going away with impunity 
and he expects this to work, it can't work. It's not a matter of the judiciary. What well, I've told you, you brought, thank God you brought the issue of Abja up, and I've told you the immense effort Abja have made to expedite uh, uh, criminal matters. And I can assure you of that it, it's going on very well. But when you see person openly corrupt in government, and nothing has been done about it, so it's about impunity. It's just impunity. What, but let me, what, why, 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 why are our anti-corruption agencies losing so many cases? They said lack of diligent prosecution um, uh, and so, several other uh, things like that. So if they file maybe 200 cases, they win about 5, 10, 50, <laughs> and then they celebrate those few ones. Why, why, why are they losing so many? Uh, there, there, there is a school of thought that uh, maybe... Uh, corruption fighting back. I don't know what your take is on that. Corruption is not fighting. Like, if, if you catch me with evidence, in controversial evidence, there's nothing I can do about it. I keep on giving the Hebrew example. <laughs> when they confronted him, he agreed for plea bargain. Nobody compelled him because you know the consequence of going through it. The point is, you pointed out earlier, diligent, diligent investigation. There's nothing like diligent investigation. It is not the hype. Of parading me on television, that is the problem. Now, just arrest me now. I see a lawyer is barren, everything. After the media hype, nothing goes into the nitty gritty of an offense. Every offense has an ingredient. What you have to prove to get this conviction. Now, where, and it is not hidden, it is not rocket science, it is clearly written in every law. And these are the ingredients that you have to prove. How many persons have you seen diligently? Investigate because investigation is the key. Anywhere in the world, able to have room for loopholes. But why don't you investigate? But the point is not even what investigation also take resources. What do you have for the investigation agencies to do the needful? You can go to the police station. And I, 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 at times I feel bad for the police. Sincerely speaking, you may be victim, but go and see the way and manner they work. Did they sincerely go to the police station now? You have to buy sheets. They are not supposed to write it is on play sheets. They are supposed to write it on the standard forms. They don't have it. Now you have to go a scene I, I report a scene of robbery or attack or assault now. The man has to leave his station to the place, even if it's just across the junction there. The man will not have any vehicle or funds to take him to the so, scene so of it's crime. About the chain. It's the, the, the chain, chain, but we need the, we need this money to from, from, the, from the uh, uh, investigation. The investigation is the key. Anywhere in the war, investigation is the key. Because with investigation, if you investigate me and you have the facts, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do to disprove what you say. So now we should form the security agencies to do the needful. Not now, if I don't have money now, you cannot investigate my matter because the police officer, the ICB officer, the, the ESC officer cannot follow up investigation because there are no funds to follow up. So this is a challenge we have. So it's not a matter of cultural fighting back. We should equip those investigating to do the needful. The anti corruption agencies, what 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 do you think? Uh, we saw last year, uh, Mago Ibrahim Mago, the head of EFCC, have his days with uh, Justice Salami Committee. Uh, he was suspended. And, and, and uh, that uh, is in the Code of Conduct Bureau Tribunal. So, so what, what's your take about that? Is, he, so, is it commendable? It's not, it's, yeah, we, I must commend the president for uh, going out of his way because I have my reservations about his fight against corruption. I do have my reservations. But if I'm not seeing going after his way to now expose what is coming obvious of the ESCC head. But the point is that the heads of the agricultural agents should not see themselves as film stars mm -hmm. or, or music rock, star, rock stars, stars that want to create. No, you have to do your job diligently discreetly. It's not for you to do the, to be involved in paparazzi stuff of just arranging people, I mean, showing people on television and not doing the needful. That's not what you're supposed to do. And you should leave a boot board. Today, if you cannot do the needful. You don't have to take the job. You cannot want to live a flamboyant life or live the life of a rock star or a four star and then want to head agency. Why do you want to keep all those in the same Magu hard? Why would you go out and sleeping in church as they allege? With money you to somebody as I've been alleged. This is not what you are doing. You sacrifice and we saw it in America. Where Democrats and Republicans stood against the institution. Okay. In the of what is okay. involved for them. Um, let's look at our um some people have said there's something that INEC can learn from Nigeria Bar Association, electronic voting. Mm. 
What, what's your take on no, that? That would be very wonderful. We have challenges also. Mm. And uh, they have impediments. The, uh, the election was almost only full, almost only almost 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 an hydro foam and uh, be able to buy data and stuff like that. But the, the bulk of our people cannot even afford hundred naira credit. Mm. So if you look at the challenges involved, can we overcome them? If we can overcome them, there's nothing as wonderful as electronic voting. But can we ensure the security? Can we ensure the the fact that at the end of the day we can be correct to say this is the actual voter and it was not hacked or uh, there, there was no any thing that will bring other persons to come and challenge it. If you can ensure that there's nothing as wonderful as the body, one, this time base. In no time we just are out. So there's no room for acrimony or, or, or shouting. The, if the standard backroom and other stuff are there that you can see pattern of voting, who voted and numbers that voted, good and fine. But can we be assured that this will not be hijacked midway and then plunge up into unnecessary crisis. Okay, okay. You, you have reservation about the security of the exactly. electronic voting exactly. system. Exactly. But, but um, we, 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 the, the National Assembly has promised us a new Electoral Act mm. 2021. What do you want to see reflected in that Electoral Act 2021? This will be your knowledge, the depth of knowledge about Nigerian elections and its challenges. Let's take the issue of political party uh, the number of political parties, uh, the deregistration of political party. Let's look at the quality of our elections. And on top of that, uh, election dispute resolution. Uh, you, you know, somebody loses election and the next thing is go to court. Go to court. Exactly. And then you see court, you get to court and the court is saying there is no the evidence. So, 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 evidence or so there was substantial compliance. Yes. What, 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 what's your take on all uh, of this? Uh, uh, the electoral arts should as much as possible bring solution to and capture all you have said mm. and let's start with political parties association i i believe that you have freedom of expression and association, and association. you can est establish political parties but we have several political parties in america and in great britain but how come at the end of the day you have two major political parties on the ballot a mechanism should be put in place that certain criteria that is why you have you should have election election should not be uniform that is very cumbersome for INEC. i don't care if elections so are you are local. talking of maybe midterm elections midterm election, maybe local local elections a, other elections a, 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 a election into the parliament in one year and then the following year we have executive elections exactly or even for local government let us try this thing because the party look party should come from the grassroots mm. why would you want to have local government election for me, for now, I prefer INEC handling that because if you don't get some threshold, you can't continue as a party. So there will be no issue of even going to court. I have gone to court for the decision. Why am I going to court? Not because I believe I will be much of parties we have now, but the law should be what they are. That is the amendment I'm looking at for. Mm. Now let's have periodic and constant local government election, council election, chairmanship election, and I'll come up. And if parties don't exist and don't win enough votes here, they go up the street, they can't even contest that. When we deal with that is good. Then we'll not have issue of at the end of the day which party can contest for election. And elsewhere, parties are there that are calling for local government election. Parties have even formed just for so local government election. They don't need national parties. We, 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 have, we naturally must have national parties, but parties can also devolve that. If you don't get a certain percentage, you are not qualified for national election. So at the mm. end of the day, this so you're, this, you're this operating uh, at the regional level, like local government level. Banks, exactly. Banks Thank you so much for and all that stuff like that. So if you can have that election, if at the local government election you don't get this type of spray, you cannot go beyond the local government election. So at the end of the day, coming to the national it will shrink. So in your, own, in, in, our, in your own view, we don't need two electoral management bodies. We just need one. I and will, then we do away with it. Because from now now, we, whether I like it, that the abuse of governors, of electoral process in the state, is 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 But don't you think if we reform the state, they can also how do you reform them? Because, because the, the US, government is there. In the US, you have, I you have to count it, even count it strongly. But yeah, now it took 200 years to get to where they are. So now, here now, have you seen any state where elections are held and you see any other party winning election? What, what is that? What is that? Any party that holds election, that party from, from, from councillor to the chairman is one party. It is, it is not feasible. 
It's not feasible. So, so about the election dispute resolution, what's the, what's your take? Are we there yet? Uh, with, with there are issues of allegation of corruption against some judges. Uh, there are uh, people said to be billionaire judges. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I the resolution so, 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 but, but, is, is uh, election dispute resolution. What, do you think there is a need to fine tune anything? We, in we that have area? to, but it is being done. Like now, the, you cannot go for election petition two times. There are a lot of things the judiciary is doing towards that. But it goes beyond the judges, the, 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 the people that resolve these issues. We have a set of... You see, I just said recently, that there's a mindset for politicians that there's nobody, that there's no judgment that cannot be bought. That should be stopped. And I have to blame employers also because you're the one that might give them this idea because you come to me, I'll tell you, I cannot go and see a judge for to give me judgment. Let me do your case the way it is. But there are some persons that will tell you that give me money to go and give the judge. And there are some politicians, no matter how you try to dissuade them, they will tell they might even leave the lawyer completely and go outside to go and call to tell you that every person has a price. So that is a challenge. It goes beyond just the judges and the lawyers. It also the psyche of the people. Mm -hmm. That we should believe that our electoral system should be such that the winner should win involving in the perspective of whatever is on take. So if you can come to that level of not having everything in an elective office, then we'll be successful. But how do you do that? We should make elective offices less attractive. Mm -hmm. and, how, and when we make it less attractive, that's where I think about the devolution of power. When we have two federalism, where we now have local government accounting for their selves and taking charge of their resources. Once you have that, people that want to scramble for the nation, because there will be nothing in the nation for you to scramble for. The president will not be in a position to give oil license. The president will not be in a position to give money license to his friends and cronies. The main license will be done by the local government chairman or his committees. The state will be involved in certain things. So at the end of the day, there will be nothing to scramble. And now you see people investing all they have, sell all the things they have to go to into policies for, and you expect that to and the you expect that to a person not to give do anything to win. So it, it's the mindset of the people. How do we change ourselves completely? And that can be done if we devolve power. Because if we devolve power, the instrumentalities that which the federal government can dish as patronage, the state government can dish as patronage, will be grossly reduced. And once they are reduced, and I don't need anything from you, I will not be subservient to you or be desperate for local office. That anybody who go to office does, will go for service. Does law have anything to do with security? One of the major challenges we have in this country is about security of lives and property. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, I recall that a, a couple of years back, in precisely in 2008, uh, towards the tail end of 2019, the Southwest governors came together to uh, float what they call Operation Amotekun, mm -hmm. that's a Southwest security mm -hmm. network. And then uh, the, the, the Attorney General kicked against it and said it's illegal because security, defense, police are under the uh, executive, executive uh, legislative. But eventually they find the middle mm -hmm. ground and uh, they asked the, each of the status of assembly to go and pass the legislation in support. So, uh, that's, uh, I see that as instrumentality of mm -hmm. law and, uh, and security fighting CC. Uh, but how, 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 do we, how do we ensure that there is no abuse? Every, almost every state now is setting up uh, paramilitary or vigilantes or, or all of that. So, between law and security, how can law be ensured, be used to guarantee better security. You know, the, the, all this law, all these security outfits have their own code of conduct that are embodied as laws. And if you go beyond that, you are punished. And that is where, if we can downplay impunity, if we can deal with impunity, they will not have any problem. You can't just, because you are in an operative, in security operative, uh, a security operative or a security organization, take the laws into your hand. If there is any breach of the fundamental right of an individual, that person will have the right to compensation and the person that breach him will have his day in court either imprisonment or punishment that is appropriate if you can do that that's coming to your abuse that if you are put within the laws and ensure that any breach because at the end of the day if i'm punished you will not do what i have done wrong i can assure you of that but if i go scot free why will not be able to do the same thing if we can curb impunity if we can look impunity to the face and bring down the person involved in the sort of his action I can assure that this will not happen. And that is what we saw in America. I keep on bringing this reference because now we saw a president that wanted to do things that are not against, against him. But the system stopped him. 
Not he wanted it. You saw what happened in the uh, state capital. He, he wanted this anarchy, but the system stood its ground. So if we have this secretary, as you already pointed out, devolve issue of defense, why would the attorney general come and jump up and say defense is not where we we are seeing the issue of open banditry, assault, kidnap. These persons are not more informed about our terrain than the people, the locals. And you now leave the locals handicapped without arms. And this will have a security arm. If you have security apparatus that in the state that are well funded and armed, not necessarily security arm of the military, but the one that can confront these bandits. You think we have bandits in Casina? Or you think we have what you're having in Southwest where Olofa is how we down continuously and people arrogant until they nobody is punished for it? I think we have what is happening on the road in, in, in Kogi State or any other part of the country. Because the state now depends on the federal. And the federal, the whole entire close 200 million Nigerians have less than 400,000 police. We have the three armed forces, we have less than 180,000. Um, how can that work? But if you give the local government and state opportunity through the maintenance of the law to have their security apparatus, we have cumulatively over. Two million, three million security apparatus to face this president, having the bandits and criminal elements that cannot be confronted. So this is where the instrumentality of the law, if well used, without sentiment, without passion uh, or necessary passion, and for the benefit of Nigerians, law will be used to set up security apparatus that will ensure peace and order. And if any person breach what they are supposed not to do, consequences will follow. How, how effective has Nigeria Bar Association been? In weeding out fake lawyers, they are doing their best, and I don't know why that I want to put a stumbling block on certain things. The issue of seal came in very, very handy. That assisted of course that there is no process you file without a seal, and you cannot have a seal without being a member of the MBA. And if you are not a member of the MBA, you are not a lawyer. So that is where you now have you go to court, you file the process, you have a seal. So where do the fake lawyer have a seal from? Because the seal also is accumulating enough to give you out at any point in time. Mm -hmm. So the issue of seal is one of the issues policies the MB have brought on board to ensure that fake lawyers are chased out of the system and that have effectively worked. So I want to appeal to that on general that is talking about abrogating the issue of sale of an MB, and that's not the right part to take. No matter your challenges, no matter your your issues with the bar. You should look at the bigger goal, not the immediate goal that is personal to you. Because at the end of the day, we are talking about the bar, which all of us are part. I can't go and farm again. If you destroy it and, and people that are not supposed to be here coming and you don't have confidence in me as a lawyer again or the judiciary or the institution of the judiciary, we are we going to, including him. Yes, you might have your money today, but tomorrow, what else can you do? Mm. So the mm. bar, the MBA are doing a lot to deal with that, and I, I must commend them. Let's look at the issue of um, uh, the the, uh, the si what the system called uh, the uh, Office of Public Defenders or what they call Legal Aid Council uh, to help uh, the, uh, less the less society. privileged people who accused that doesn't have money to to hire lawyers. How effective has that been? It, it, in, in it, is, it is. It is. It is. I, I, I don't have to. I do a lot of cases for legal aid council. I've taken personal cases myself to assist. But you see, it is not easy. If you are not careful, you can ruin yourself also as a lawyer. That is why running a case now, filing of each matters in court takes money. Filing processes in court takes money, even for the defendant. So if you don't have the resources, you might find this challenging to embrace that. But it's not all about money all the time. I do a lot of pro bono matters for persons, and I'm one of the essential solicitors to Legal Aid Council. And they give me briefs that I do for free for persons. And the judges also, from time to time, in their own court, appeal to lawyers to take up cases for persons free. And a lot of us are taking such challenges. So it is growing, but the economy is also a hindering factor for a lot of persons that want to be like me. Not that they don't want to do what I'm doing, but they don't have the capability financially to do it. And you will not hold them responsible. That is why elsewhere, the government will have funded the legal aid council adequately. So that as these cases are coming, you give some financial muscles to the lawyer that you are assigning these cases to, to at least, not necessarily their transport or other expenses, to five processes so that when that stipends come in, the lawyer can do more. 
and that was a younger lawyers that have nothing doing to have cases to deal with. So the government should also look at that area. Yes, you talk about publicity of funds, but it's, you should prioritize. Fund people are buying private jets, buy the governor's convoy is about 50 vehicles, not to talk about the president, uh, the man coming from office, you have to three hours, four hours, AC is on. This is not what we should need. Put all this fund to where they can be used effectively. So I urge the government to fund legal issues, public defenders, and I can assure that a lot of lawyers will key to it. Many a time we say uh, justice delayed is justice denied. Um, um, my next question is about uh, the prison congestion. Um, oftentimes, and I've written about this in my column in the Punch newspaper, about the lopsidedness of our waiting trial inmates and those who are convicted. So you see congestion in the in the in the in the pre correctional services they call them now. How, how do you think we can use the instrumentality of the law? to the congest prison and is it that's one two is it mandatory that prison should be under the federal government that is what we are talking about more not necessary you have like in new york and you are here about i please don't put on my as i bring because that's a very uh, a big uh, country that we see things relatively working you have state laws and federal laws the state of New York are insisting that they must prosecute Donald Trump based on their laws. And if people that infringe on state laws are in prison. And they have state correctional facilities that take care of that. And then you have federal prisons that cater for federal. These are things that is making the federal government so cumbersome, unwilling, as you rightly pointed out. So we can break all these stuff off. And then you can have prisons for state offenders, federal offenders, that you can ensure. That the are not uh, are not congested as they are now because there are a lot of like domestic violence. These are not federal offenses, but we are having people convicted for such. Why would they be in prison? Uh, no. prison. Exactly, and then more fundamentally, the issue of the judiciary and the police. A lot of cases that you grant bail to, you refuse to grant bail to. If somebody have reasonable shorty, grant the person bail. So at the end of the day, what we have is convicts in prison. As you say, go to every prison, uh, thank God they're wishing about it, you have more awaiting prisoners than actual prisoners. And these awaiting prisoners could have as well been granted bail. And, 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 and in some cases, uh, they are, they are, they are, their offenses may be less than the number but, of jails they spend. Thank you so much. So that's where abroad there's no, apart from treason, uh, capital offenses uh, like murder, even other offenses available, provide a shorty. But I understand. Here, where do you verify the shorty? Mm. You give a shorty today, the person disappears and nobody will see that. But if you have visible shorties that can stand and you can ensure that this person will attend his trial, sincerely speaking, there's no need for. So, so let's for, look for, at, for again, on the point of law and development. Um, we, we, for those who are convicted, convicts, mm. uh, there, there, there are ins insinuation of the. You know, a proposition that do, do we need to actually send people to correctional homes or can't we have suspended sentences, community service, um, power, I just have taken care of all those stuff. Yeah. Is this, is this, well, where are we not? Where are we, we are seeing, we are seeing. Uh, is it, there are things if you don't go to the system, you will not even know. Recently, my friend's car was stolen and he was telling me about how his car was recovered because one of the criminals was given a parole. But he was under observation by the police also. And that was also saved the day. Because the police were monitoring. See, it's just funds. If you can prioritize and effectively deploy funds, all this thing you're talking about is easy. And then let's go to community police, uh, community sentences, mm. actually. That is wonderful. Uh, but that came to be with the immediate past uh, chief of uh, Abuja FCT. And what he said during the COVID-19 period, mm -hmm. sweep the road. Oh, sweep and, the road. Uh, and these are things. So yeah. it's something that have just come on board. And something that we should encourage. People like you that write now and have a program, and we should voice all this thing. Mm. It's not able that need to go to prison. That's, exactly. even, that's enough prison. When you see a big man that have committed something that is and, number and one year, he's sweeping on the road. Sweep if he does sweep the road, the consequences might be harsher. Mm. He will see him sweeping the road, and that will serve as a good deterrent. So this is something we should come to the fore with and bring to you. But you see, most of our prosecutors they go and insist on certain conviction, and the judge, because of other things, might not be willing to do the needful. But 
I will enjoy and encourage judges to explore these other alternatives because that will go a long way to decongest prisons and it will also go a long way to assist the society because those persons you see on the road will serve as detail for me and you, not coming off it. Also, we put on the road sweeping now. Let's put our sentence be sweeping the road. We are costing home. Mm. Uh, what, what is your take on public interest litigation? Uh, as we see Serap doing social economic accountability yeah. center. Uh, I, I do that a lot also. That is what I had cost to take uh, Central Bank to cut in on several issues. I have cost to take the Minister of FC to come. That is the way to go because at that point in time, the, nobody Bruce Black can even come to me and you or any of this organization to do the needful. You see them uh, asking government to do what they're supposed to do, provide information or not. So it's a very interesting aspect of law. So it most only lawyers, other persons that have the public interest in at heart can go and form a society like that and brief lawyers to do the needful. You can articulate these points, bring it to the fore, and the lawyers can follow it to the court. So it's something we must the, encourage. The state of human rights in Nigeria, uh, what's your assessment of Greed. The human rights. In, yes, uh, okay, human rights. Okay, I tell yourself, state, human rights. State, state no, human, human rights, human right, I, I don't want to see. Look at what happened in Kaduna State recently, where the governor of the state went to demolish a place. And now look at what happened. You arraigned the person because the PDP spokesman, uh, husband, the, that is there. And then look at, uh, you, you gave bill condition in a place in Kaduna that the offense happened. You say the, the shortage you have a property in Abuja. It is not fair. Human rights gives us the freedom of expression. Mm. And now we see people using abusing power to to, to punch other person. It is wrong. The human rights situation needs to be fair and least have freedom of expression. People can express themselves. But freedom without after freedom. expression. Uh, it is what <laughs> nobody can guarantee. We have freedom of movement to a large extent, but for banditry. So if you look at it holistically, objectively, you can't but say that Nigerian relatively enjoy their fundamental human rights. Okay, um, on, on a final note and on a lighter mood, how fulfilled have you been as a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> how many years have you put into legal? Uh, 21 years now. That's 21 years. What I call you the legal lawyer you are You are the one that's the one. What's your level of fulfillment? No, I do uh, extremely so fulfilled. Like, let me tell you a personal story. Uh, there's a, a place just as you talk about impunity in Maraba area where somebody just went to grab people's land. Who are these people? People that struggle to build their houses, struggling to survive, and they boost my law firm. They were not paying us. They could give you money to charge for that fifteen naira, one naira, hundred naira in different denominations. We collect to just file their process and go to court. At the end of the day, when we involve the, we, we sued the governor of Nasara State and the Attorney General. We discovered that it was the area office in Maraba that was in cahoots with one other person to take people's land. And when the Attorney General came on board and saw everything, the area uh, council uh, person there came and begged and those my clients got their number thus they fulfilled because now i was in a position to give people joy because you are afraid even because we intervene you have demolished their land nobody have moved but i can tell you the state government was not even aware of what was happening uh, mm. in Maraba at that point in time so with such several other cases that we have done we recently we had two persons uh, arraigned for armed robbery in the buari Free. Why we say so? Not free because we like to claim the arm robbers. But from the scenario and the facts we have, we had, there was nothing like that happened. That was the case I did for legal cases free of charge. And they are they 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 were weeping when they left, thanking me as if I'm yeah second go. So anyway, I, I, I know I you can God. talk <laughs> on and on, but it's been a very wonderful how with uh, legal luminary and it says <laughs> Godwin Sandy Oguji uh, he is an Abuja based legal practitioner you have heard him speak and I leave the judgment to you please join us on the next edition of Development Focus with Jijojo have a great day, thank you